Hey, hey, sports fans, PBZ, Sports Chaos. It's our Thanksgiving weekend marathon. We got another one for you. We're going to talk some football, football, football. PB's got a, a little Coors Light. I got a little Harpoon. Bruins won again today. They think I think that's now the all-time record out of the gate. 12 and 0, if I'm not mistaken, at home. Good wow. job by our bees. They beat the hurricane in overtime. Speaking of overtime, you watched the Americans. Um, real men watch college football today, but you watched the soccer game. What, what happened there with the Americans in England? Well, let me just say on my patio here, I do have two TVs. So I did have the college football on one TV and I had the World Cup on the uh, other. So Okay. Unlike most Americans who only get to watch one TV at once, I was actually watching both. Um, nice. But I, then do that being, in, I do have seven in my house, though. Right, but you got to be in a spot where you can sit on one couch and watch two at the same time. That's the best. Anyways, um, yeah, it, it, was a, uh, it was a good game, uh, even though it ended in a 0-0 tie. Is that uh, what it was, 0-0? Zero, 0-0 zero? Zero, zero tie. Um, so the U.S. has two points out of, you know, two games they played so far. Um I tell you though, they had more opportunities. They had more shots to the net. They had more corner kicks. It just seemed like they were dominating the game at times. I don't know what the time possession ended up with, but they certainly went toe to toe with them without a question. As a matter of fact, I just saw a stat. It was the first time a United States team has held a European team without a goal since 1950. Really? Wow. Yeah. And All right. Cup. In World Cup play, in right. World Cup play, so that's kind of a big deal. Here's the deal, though: they got two points. Iran actually won today. They beat Wales, who the United States previously tied one to one. So now the U.S. is in a situation where they win, they're in. A tie well, they're gonna, or a loss, they're going to beat Iran the next game. They're going to beat Iran. A tie or a loss, and they're out. All right. So they got they got to win that game on Tuesday, and if they do, they'll advance. So it's kind of a big deal. But Iran, you can't just brush them off. They just beat Wales two to nothing, who the U.S. tied. So they have the capability to win to win a game. I got a feeling the, the ghost of Ronald Reagan is going to push the Americans over Iran once again, like 1980, all over again when, when Reagan took over presidency. All Let's right. hope. Let's hope. Yes. All right. Let's talk a little NFL because that's what was played yesterday. We had three games. I think we all thought the outcome was going to be what turned out to be. Bills beat the t Detroit, Cowboys beat the Giants, Vikings beat our Patriots, but there were some storylines in those games. Detroit took the Bills right to the end, and then Josh Allen did Josh Allen-like stuff. 60 yards in 21 seconds to win the goddamn game on a field goal. Yeah. Was that unbelievable? And that yeah. ball to Diggs was an absolute missile, wasn't it? That, that I was just going to say, that throw to Diggs was money. And then he ran after – he ran two plays after that. Um, Josh Allen, when it comes down to – like, I, I can't wait. I, I hope it's – I love the Patriots, but I, I want to see a Chiefs-Bills AFC Championship game. I think that will just be classic, you know. And I'd take either of those two guys right now in a clutch situation – to win a game for you. Well, they played a great game last year. Josh scored the uh, guard, tying uh, uh, go ahead. And then with 13 yep. seconds left, Mahomes brought him down there for a tie, right? So yeah. I just wish, I just wish that was the ch AFC championship game, you know, because that, that would have just to have that winner go to the Super Bowl would have been different. Yeah. I hope this year that's how it ends up. By, by the way, on the other hand, I, I think the Pats that, that sealed their place, they, I don't think they get in the playoffs. It, they're six and five right, right now. They're going to play Buffalo next week. It's at home. I mean, it's on Thursday night football. If they yeah, can three, three games in 12 days for the Patriots, that's a, I know. That's a tough stretch. That is a tough stretch. But if, if they can win that game, then we start having the conversation with the Patriots can sneak in again. If they lose that game and go back to 500, you know, depending on what, you know, the Chargers do this weekend and things like that. I mean, Cincinnati. Those are teams that certainly can lose. Cincinnati, we're going to pick those games later, right? Cincinnati's playing Tennessee yep, yep. and the Chargers are playing Arizona on the road. If those, if they both lose, then that kind of keeps the Patriots hanging around some more. But if they it both does. win, if they both win and then the Patriots lose next week, eh, it, and, yeah. And plus the talking. Patriots have to finish with the Bills at the end of the season in Buffalo, right? Right, and they still have another one with Miami. 
Yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to be tough. It's a tough road for them. I mean, they had their easy part of their schedule, and that's why they are where they are now. Hey, by the way, the bright light of that game was Mac Jones finally showed what we were thinking about when he got drafted a year and a half ago, right? That he could be the next starting quarterback for 10, 12 years. He had a great game. What did he throw for 380, I think it was, something like that? I don't think he was up over 300, but yeah, he, he was. No, he was over he, 300. Was he really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, I mean, he definitely looked like he knew what he was doing. Um, they were playing a team that obviously doesn't have a, the best defense on the, you know, in the league, but certainly a formidable defense. He They, they went toe-to-toe with one of the, what like now is one of the better teams. I mean, last week, them and the Eagles had the two best records in the entire NFL, and they were on the road, and they hung with them. So, By you got to give them credit. I, I, I'm going to add something to that about the Vikings. But first of all, we got to get this goddamn completion rule straightened out in the NFL. It is going to be a cold, hard rule around the completion rule. At the end of the day, you can't have completions where the guy's bobbling it, but he catches it and he's okay. But if the ball supposedly touches the ground, even though you got a hand on it, if he doesn't complete the catch because it bobbles, even though it stays in his hands without ever touching the ground again, it's not a catch. It's going to be one way or another. Can't was, be- that, was that play called incomplete? It was called completion on the field. It was a touchdown on the field. Right, and then it was ruled incomplete? Or yes. was it just ruled short of the goal line? It was ruled uh, incomplete. incomplete. Totally incomplete. But, Much but, like the Des Bryant playing against Green Bay several but, years ago. But the ball never touched the ground. But they say it did, which caused the bobble in Hunter Henry's hands, and that's why they call it – that's what I'm saying. The, the rule has to be so – it can't have any wishy-washy to it. If the guy ends up with the ball on his belly, doesn't ever hit the ground ever – it might have touched it, but his hand was under it. Yeah. It's a catch. At the end of the yeah. day, it's a catch. Figure that out. College gets it right every time. I don't know why the NFL can't do it. By the way, the Vikings, they if they don't have that play go against the Patriots and the pass don't screw up the punt return, they lose again. I don't know the Vikings are that good after all. They're going to win the division because Green Bay sucks. Yeah. But the Vikings are one and done in the playoffs, in my opinion. Uh, we'll see who they draw, but yeah, I mean, if they get in as a two seed or, you know, even a three, they, they might be okay. But I mean, who they, what, if, what if they draw the Giants and they're playing in, in Minnesota? Well, this one, they, if they, they, they're probably going to draw the Cowboys if they end up as a two or a three because Cowboys, maybe they'd be Phil or Philadelphia, one or the other, right? So yeah. the Giants are done. By the way, the Giants are done. And I'm going to talk about that when we pick the Washington game in a minute. I'm going to have a surprise for you. But the Giants okay. are done. Okay. All done. Hey, hey. by the way, the other thing, uh, my, my other takeaway, the Cowboys. Uh, I know they're into the, on the OBJ chase, supposedly. Michael Gallup does not get enough credit. He made five of the best catches. I mean, contested every one of those ones yesterday. And everybody, only thing they talk about was uh, C.D. Lamb's one hand or gets his head. But Michael Gallup showed a lot of guts early in the game, keeping them in it in the first half when Dak was crabby with two interceptions. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and Gallup, the only thing about Gallup, though, is he is a little injury prone. Yes, um, yes. If he can get through the year and get through the playoffs, we'll see. But, yeah, I agree with you right now. Dallas is looking like them and the, and the Niners, to me, look like the teams to beat in the NFC. Let's do a little pick in here, a little pick six. You ready? Hey, let's do it. All right. First wait, 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 wait. Are we, we're not doing college first? No, we'll come back to college after our pick six. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Tampa Bay. Money. Tampa Bay. Well, because we got our, our college picks from yesterday still going on, right? So. Okay. All right. Tampa Bay at the Browns. This game, you, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, pick a Tampa Bay, but the Browns run the ball, which is the weakness of Tampa Bay right now. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. This could be a little bit of a trap game for the Bucs um, going on the road, playing the elements potentially. I, I just think, and to your point, Cleveland has the recipe to maybe hang in there with the Bucs. But I think the Bucs have found their way. And I'm not even concerned about Fournette because we don't know if Fournette's going to play right now. Um, but Godwin's back. He should be good to go. Um, I mean, they're all back. Evans is back. Jude, back. Uh, Julio's playing. Russell Gage yeah. is playing. Like, yeah. Scotty think, Miller's playing. Yeah, I think Fournette's the only one that might not play. But I, Rashad White's no joke either if he comes in and, and, and he ends up being the lead back. 
I think by the that, way, Rashad um, White is now Brady's official new James White, in my opinion. It, it, yeah, he just switched first names, and there you go. Um, so I, I just I do like where Tampa Bay is right now. I think they're finding their way, and they all and you know, Brady, Brady's whole career has been it doesn't matter what you do before Thanksgiving, it matters what you do after Thanksgiving. And this is right, their right, first right. this is their first game after Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the box on the road in this one. All right, man. I, I got Tampa Bay as well. I, I, what did G Money pick? I didn't see it. Uh, G Money also took Tampa Bay, and okay. and, just, and Stevie Two Seam is looking for a little redemption because he went two and four yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You went six and zero. Oh, I went five and one. G Money went four and two. Two Seam went two and four. So he's like, I want redemption. So he, <laughs> What's he got? He, he's got Tampa Bay that one too. All right, all right. So all of us got Tampa Bay. All right. One of the games with playoff implications: Bengals Titans. Joe yeah. Mixon is out for the Bengals. Jamar Chase is still out for the Bengals. What do you think? At the well, both of those players are not officially out as of yet, I don't believe. Uh, Mixon's probably less likely to play than Chase. Mixon is not logged to practice, I don't think, this week, whereas uh, Chase has limited practices. So we'll see where that ends up. Either way, though, um, I, I like what I saw of Samaji P. Ryan last year week i think he can step up and do what he has to do and i think the Bengals are almost the equivalent of the bucks if you look at afc and nfc yeah, a lot true. of weapons yeah yeah right a lot of weapons teams that's you know having a little bit of a slow start but what matters is what you do after thanksgiving and i think the Bengals have the talent to win this game so despite it being on the road against a very good titans team um i still think the titans are way overrated and they'll be one and done even if they win that division but I'm going to go with the Bengals. Well, I happen to believe Mixon's going to be out. I got a good source to set. Jamal's going to be out as well. Bengals cannot stop the running game. I think Henry goes for 200 yards in this game. Titans win. All right. Well, me and G Money got Cincinnati. You and Stevie Tusima have Tennessee. Oh, no. I'm not liking that now. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. Here's one that has playoff elimination implications because believe it or not we would not have said this back in september but both these teams falcons are playing the washington commanders both these teams are in the playoff mix in theory falcons more so but washington believe it or not i just looked at their uh, upcoming schedule they win this game they have a good shot at going 10 and 7 which would not have been anything we would have thought about being the right. end. but taylor heineken is that his name oh taylor heineken never mind i think about it. i was thinking about what i'm drinking yesterday taylor heineken he's got them playing really solid so what do you think yeah no, obviously for a reason i mean they, wentz they said if wentz is back i don't know if he's fully back yet or not as as the backup inserted as the backup but they said heineken's our starter going forward so he took that job from Wentz, you know how I feel about Carson Wentz and his quarterback yeah. play anyways. So I think Heineke deserves this job. And I'm actually looking for a big day out of Heineke. Uh, Atlanta is one of the worst teams in the league against um, the pass and against quarterbacks putting up good numbers. So I'm going to think Heineke's going to have a big day. I think McLaurin will have a big day. Uh, I'm looking for Gibson to also have a good day. Uh, I think I think Washington actually dominates this game. I would be surprised if they went by ten to fourteen points. So I'm taking the I'm taking the Commanders. I'm with you. The I, I, NFC East going to get three teams in the playoffs, and it's not going to be the Giants. By the way, Washington plays after this weekend the Giants in back to back games. That's that's strange and interesting that, that they're doing that. But. And the way the Giants look right now, I mean, Washington they're going to win the next three games in a row. <laughs> they could they could very well. By the way, G Money and Stevie Two Seema both have the Commanders as well. All right. All right. So we're all on the commanders. All right. Poor yeah. Falcons. All right. Chargers. They go to the Cardinals. This game looked a lot better at the beginning of the year. It still could be a good game. Kyler Murray is back, but he has a hamstring pull. So I don't know. A guy like him who relies on his legs, hamstring a little naughty. Never know. Chargers yeah. looking for redemption. G Money is down there. He's going to be broadcasting live, he tells us, from Arizona <laughs> as he's watching the game. He'll probably be too drunk to talk about anything. But anyways... <laughs> The loser in this game is probably out, right? At the end of the day, maybe, maybe not for the Chargers, but the Cardinals, I think, are out. They lose this game. Yeah, yeah. And the Cardinals actually have the worst road record in the NFL at home. I think the I think the Texans have the worst road record, and they have the second worst road record um, in the NFL. They've only won one game this year at home. Um, 
And even though Murray's coming back, like you said, he relies on his legs a lot. He's not the, you know, pure drop back kind of guy. So uh, I like his charges in this one, uh, as does G Money, as does Two Seamer. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I, I just, I would have liked to see the cards look a little better, but you're right. I don't think so. So charges win that one. Hey, all right. This game is interesting to me only because the Raiders finally did something good last week. They play Seattle at the beginning of the year. This would have been a no brainer. I think we all would have picked on um, the Raiders, but Seattle is on fire. I mean, right now they're, I think they're, are they still like, are they a game up over the 49ers or technically tied? I forget. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure either, but I mean, they're both six and four. Oh, you know what it is? San Fran's up because they're four and zero in the division. So Seattle's okay. uh, behind them, but they're six and four. Who would have expected that at this point in time? I, I flipped on this one five times. I got to tell you right now, I'm going to go with Seattle because they're at home, but I, I, I was easily going to take LA, uh, L, L, LA, Las Vegas earlier in the day. What do you think? Yeah. And that's a clean sweep. And it's been a clean sweep. The four of us, if you include G Money and two Seema, we're the same with Tampa, we're the same with Washington, we're the same with the Chargers, we're the same with Seattle. So you're looking at clean sweeps in all four of those games with all fours. The only game we had some difference, me and G Money took Cincinnati, you and Two Seamer took Tennessee. Other than that, we're the same all the way through thus far. So let's see, we got right. last one. The last one, the Steelers and Colts. This game, I, I have to like this game a lot. I, I like the way the Steelers are starting to look a little better. Kenny Pick is finding his footing. And the Saturdays are playing well on Sundays. This week they're playing on Monday, fighting Jeff Saturday. I know there's a lot of flack out there about him being named head coach. The team is different with him. That's all I'm going to say. They are playing much different. I know they lost last week in a close one, but they are playing much different. I'm taking the Colts. I'm going to just tell you right now. And you know what? They did. They went toe-to-toe with the Eagles, and they should have beaten them, really, at the end of the day. But yeah. they, but they pulled that one off. But I do like the way Indy's playing as well. It's at Indy. I'm going with Indy, too. Just for the record, G-Money and Stevie Tusima are all the way on this one. They're both taking Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. It's a coin flip. You know what? If Frank White Wright was still coaching, I would be taking Pittsburgh as well. But I like Saturday. So, all right. Saturday on a Monday, right? Yeah. yep. Yeah. All right, my man. Nice one. There we go. Have a good rest of your wait, Thanksgiving wait, weekend. What, what, what oh, happened to the Colts? Oh, yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting. All right, we're doing <laughs> I, I screwed my own self up. All right. <laughs> we got some rivalry games going on, right? Yep. All right, let's talk about it. First one out there, we'll go with uh, Michigan go. at Ohio State, right? Yeah, let's go that one. Ohio State, eight-point favorite in this game. The winner is in. The loser is probably out unless the loser is Ohio State. I don't think so. I'm taking Ohio State with the eight points. I'm giving the eight points. They're going to win this game easily, I You're think. giving the eight points. She might have given the eight points. I'm, I'm going to take the eight points, and I'm going to go with Michigan. This is your guys' week to try and catch me because I'm going against you and everything. All right. All right. All right. The next one. Let's talk about the Apple Cup. That's the one that played out in Washington. Number 13, Washington, one and a half point favorite over Wazoo. It's being played out at Wazoo. This, this is a tough game because the rivalry of it goes back over 100 plus years, I think to 1899, if I'm not mistaken. What do you think? I'm going to go with the road team. I think Washington can uh, go in there and win and cover the uh, spread. Just okay. a small spread. One and a half. Yeah, G Money has Washington. He does? Okay. I, I'm going to go Wazoo. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. G-Money has Washington State. I'm going to go Wazoo as well. I got a feeling on this one. I'm going Wazoo. All right. By the way, another rivalry game. This one used to be called the Civil War, another in-state rivalry. No longer. Apparently, the AD said that's too politically incorrect. They will no longer call it. Me and the all the alumni will still call it the Civil War. Oregon goes to Oregon State. Oregon, number nine in the country. Oregon State, number 21. Little T, a uh, little uh, DYK for you. These guys have been playing since 1894. It's only the fifth time in the whole history. They played every year since 1894. Only the fifth time that both teams have been ranked in the game. Wow. And number nine, Oregon's a three-point favorite at number 21, Oregon State. What do you think? Yeah, I'm going to take the road team. I'm going to take Oregon. I'm going to lay the points. All right. 
I'm actually going to go Oregon as well. I think they have a sneaky chance for the uh, college football playoffs. So a lot of chaos happens, but I'm going to go Oregon myself. G-Money has Oregon State. He does. Okay. All right. The Beavers. He's going. He, well, yeah, I know why. He likes the Beaver. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Out west. Number 15, Notre Dame goes to number six, USC. Caleb Williams, the quarterback from USC right now, I believe is the front runner for the Heisman Trophy, the way he's played the last few weeks, the former Oklahoma yeah. trader. What do you think? Yeah, and he, he had a good game. He came back against UCLA. Um, pretty impressive in that game. Um, this is how I'm going back and forth, back and forth, and I'm like, where do I go with this one? I like the, the home team. I like USC. I like what they're doing. I think they have potential around the table, but I think that the, this game just stays close. I think USC wins it, but they win it by less than five, so I'm going to take the points with Notre Dame. Ooh, all right. I'm going to go USC. I think they win by a touchdown. All right. G-Money has Notre Dame as well with me. Oh, he does. Okay. He's kind of a Notre Dame guy. Guy, He doesn't admit it, but he usually picks Notre Dame. <laughs> All right, we get we get everything in. Did we miss anything? <laughs> no, we're good now. All right, all right, that's a wrap, fans. Have a great weekend, PB. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man.